um, are we ready to go? Are we connected in to the system? Yeah. Right, good evening and welcome to this evening's virtual planning meeting. Uh, by virtue of new regulations introduced by the government. I am Councillor Peter Dean and I will be chairing the meeting this evening. The regulations have temporarily removed the legal requirement for local authorities to hold meetings in person. This will enable councils to make effective and transparent decisions on the delivery of services for residents. The requirement of public meetings to be made accessible to the public still remains and the link to the virtual meeting is available on the Council's website in the usual live meeting link page. In connection to a, if a connection to a member is lost during the meeting, I will stop the meeting to enable the connection to be restored. If the connection cannot be restored within a reasonable time, the meeting will proceed, but the member who has been disconnected will not be able to vote on the matter under the discussion as they would not have heard all the facts. Should it, any aspects of the external link fail, I may call a short adjournment for up to five minutes so to determine whether the connection can be quickly established, either via video technology or telephone in the alternative. If the connection is not restored within the time, the meeting will adjourn, be adjourned and any further discussions not proceed until another time and date. Any public questions properly submit, submitted at the meeting during this period will be read out by myself and answered at the meeting. Firstly, can I ask the clerk to uh, ask members to confirm their attendance? Councillor Davis. Present. Councillor Gary. Present. Councillor Gloucester. Present. Councillor Harkness. Present. Councillor Hewitt. Present. Councillor Ibrahim. Councillor Ibrahim. Councillor Iqbal. Present. Councillor Iqbal. Present. Thank you. Councillor Jake. Present. Councillor Malik. Councillor Vivian. Present. Councillor Sheldon. Yeah, present. Councillor Sergian. Present. And Councillor Dean. Present. OK, thanks very much indeed. Um, when the committee comes to take a vote on any item, each member will be individually asked to state whether they are for, against or abstaining on that item. We also have in attendance officers from Planning and Legal and Constitutional Services. If we can now turn to the agenda uh, for the benefit of those members of the public who are watching, the full agenda pack is available on the Council's website. The pack also includes the slides that will be presented this evening. Item one, do we have any apologies for absence? I've got apologies from Councillor Akhtar and Councillor Hudson with Councillor Sheldon substituting for him. Is there any further apologies? None received, Chair. Thank you. Item two um, is urgent business. I don't believe we have any urgent business before us tonight. Item three is declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations? Thank you. Um, we have public questions. We've received no public questions uh, for this evening's meeting. Item five is the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 14th of October. I will move them as a correct record. Are those seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Um, if we go to a vote now to approve them, please. Councillor Davis. Approved. Councillor Gary. Approved. Councillor Gloucester. Approved. Councillor Harkness. Approved. Councillor Hewitt. Approved. Councillor Iqbal. Approved. Thank you. Councillor Jakes. Approved. Councillor Fivian. Approved. Councillor Sheldon. Uh, 
I, I can't, but I wasn't there at the last meeting. Okay. Councillor Sergio? Approved. And Councillor D. Approved. Thank you very much. If we can move on to the substantive items. Um, if I could take items six and seven together because they are for the same um, premise, well, the same, um, same application. Um, and this is the land at the rear of the Dog and Partridge Public House, Medlock Road, Failsworth. And these are two applications to uh, um, vary the conditions of the, the approved application. If I can ask the officers to introduce the item, please. Hi, um, I'm Matthew Taylor, I'm the case officer for all these applications. I'll just uh, share the slides with you now. Screen, sorry, sorry. Mm. So the first application sent to you here is um, application number three four 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 seven eight. This is the variation to condition number two, and it relates to um, the amendment to the site layout um and let a level there's our levels and the house types and the roof heights this is the application site which i'm sure a lot of the, the councillors are aware because some of you um decided the original application and um, the area edge blue is is in the, the ownership of the applicant but obviously the area edge red is the application site here is a scenario view just so you can get an understanding of where the dog and partridge is where the park is and obviously the golf club so in relation to it, to fully explain it, um, basically the application is for the removal of house type number four. Um, this would be substituted across the, the layout for house type number one and house type number five. Um, there's the addition of house types five, six and seven, um, which, which go along with the house types one, two and three and allow a better variation of the fenestration and design across the site. There is an increase in the ridge heights of, of, of the original house types, number one, two and three, and this is to allow um, for better use of, of the space in the roof, um, which they were utilising previously, and also allows for the fact that there is some level changes on, on site that they found following additional um, topography information coming forward as, as, as they started the scheme. So this is, this is the two layouts side by side. As you can see, um, the change in terms of the overall um, number of house types, but in terms of the mix in terms of house types, so semis and, 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 and detached houses, that doesn't change, that, that's maintained. Um, going forward, these, these plans here show the original uh, approved section and um, the proposed section that they've brought forward. The, the level changes across the site is, is, is about half a metre between, between the two, but that varies at certain points, just to give you an idea. And the overall ridge height change is about half a metre, and that's to, obviously to get the rooms in the roof um, to be much more usable. So if we go to house type one, I've given an insight there at the bottom of each slide of the house types of what a similar original house type was. So this is, this is the semis, and, and as you can see, um, it's, it's that area above, on, on the within the roof, it's that area making the rooms in the roof much more usable. So it lifts the ridge and it's marginally lifts the eaves heights. If you look across the two pictures um, of the plans. And the same again there for this detached house type. Still got a thing for a flat roof extension at the back and it's still got the integral garage. Going on to house type three, again, you can see that's that ridge height change, but it's still got that attached garage parking area. Uh, house type five, because obviously house type four has been removed. And um, this is one of the new ones, but I've, so, I've, I've sought to give you a similar original scheme at the bottom there, so you can compare it to. It's not significantly different. It, it just, again, it, these next three allow for um, 
better mix of of house types across the site instead of it being um, very very much between the the three house types that would be left. So that is six. That is seven. End of the slideshow. Okay. And would you like me to go through the second one as well at the same time? Or do you want to um, Did you say at the beginning? If you, if you leave it at that and we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see where we go from here. Uh, has anybody got any questions um, of, uh, in regard to the um, application and the modifications that are before us? Councillor Jakes. Uh, hi, Matthew. Um, I've been sent a photograph this morning of this house, these, some of these houses that have already been built and they tower over the other houses on Medlock Road. And was this agreed prior to planning that they would be actually as big as this? Because they, they really do look out of place. So in, really, in relation to the houses, they the, the size of them is in was originally in comparison to the original three houses that are next door to the Medlock pub. Um, obviously, they they have changed in size, and the, and the change isn't isn't deemed significant. Like I say, the, there's a marginal change in levels, which is found on the site anyway. But then the change in height is is it's less than a meter overall. So the overall size of them. Was always always they were always going to be quite tall buildings, three storey build three storey in terms of using the roof height as for rooms. So the actual change isn't that significant to what was approved. Okay, is there any further any further questions or observations? Okay, um, Councillor Davis. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, so just following on from Councillor Jakes's question there. So just to be clear, though, they've not they've not built these buildings in the anticipation that this is going to be approved, have they? It's just the original plans that they've built to. Is that correct? So, so the work the works have progressed on site, and it and it's it's my it's my understanding that they've they've progressed against um originally what they had permission and now obviously once they get this then they, they would they would finish them off to what they're meant now meant to be um but I'm, i haven't been to the site for, for some time since it so i'm not i'm not totally aware i can't confirm or deny that right okay so if i can come back then it's a possibility that they could have built them to the the spec that we could potentially be voting for or against yeah, and if they have done, obviously all developments are all development is on un, is undertaken if you are beyond your plans at your own at their own risk. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Dickman. Just, just really to add, Matthew, and obviously members will have been in this situation before. That clearly applicants sometimes do anticipate getting an approval on a, a scheme. It's highly likely, I would suggest, I've not been to the site, but it's highly likely that what's being constructed is what is now being applied for. Um, there would be no point in continuing with the scheme that obviously they would be looking to change. But as members are well aware, your judgment is on this, the development itself and its planning merits. Whether it's retrospective or not isn't part of that judgment. I think what Matthew's slides were, were intending to show, and that's why he we, we went through them in a lot of detail, is that yes, these are large buildings, but they were large buildings as approved. So what the consideration is now is between what was approved and the current scheme and whether the visual impact, the physical impact of those is going to be significantly different to what has got an approval. Our opinion as officers is that that's not the case. Obviously, the presentation pack allows you to make that direct comparison. But the point generally goes that, yes, if they have jumped the gun, if they are constructing the revised house types, if members tonight, 
determine for proper planning reasons that that's an unacceptable development. Clearly, that's at their own risk. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gloucester. Yeah, in terms of the actual height of these buildings, then there is, I, I'm assuming that there is no difference, is there? It's just the actual apex of the roof that's changed slightly. There, there is a there is a height difference of um of of the ridge lines and the the, the eaves are marginally picked up to make the rooms more usable. So know. what is the height difference then on the height, houses? The height difference is is a is a is about half a half a meter. It depends on each house type. Obviously, there's there's there's, there's marginal changes between each one, but approximately, it's about half a meter. So I presume that in terms of the ones that have been built, we don't know which type of house that is to put a comparison in to see what the, the project is going to look like moving forwards, if you get where I'm coming from. Like I say, I haven't I haven't been so I haven't got I haven't got a photo. I do apologise. But the, the difference is, is is marginal when you take into account, like Graham said, the original plans that we that were approved. Uh, Councillor Hewitt. I think you're on mute, Councillor Hewitt. Apologies, Chair. Um, you give us two different heights differences. You said half a metre, and now uh, you said a metre, and now you said half a metre. Which one is it? So you you, you need to make the, the differences is between there's a level change on the site across the site and then there's a there's a ridge change so obviously the level change is what was there was a mistake in terms of the land levels in terms of the readings that they got which has been rectified and that's why the new the new levels are in and then there's a marginal change to the the designs and the ridge heights that's where when you bring the two together that's that's the overall meter and the question that was previously asked was about the actual ridge heights not not the levels so that's where the difference comes Councillor Sheldon. Thank you, Chair. It, it just strikes me as really surprising that most of these house types are all looking to to be raised either half a metre or three quarters of a metre higher than they were. Surely the, this, this should be sorted out at design stage and to come back now and say we want to raise the whole estate by half a metre, say, it, it's quite shocking i think sorry I, I i didn't i didn't hear the question i mean if it's in relation to the changes i mean uh, applicants and developers um have changes to their sites as they go forward now the planning process allow, allows for them to make amendments. That's that's where Section 73 applications, which is what these two applications are, allow for. And and the and the idea is that the, the a lot of things do change in terms of developments as 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 they go along. Um, and MMA applications and NMA applications, non-material and minor material applica applications, are part and parcel of the process, and and have been for a number of years. I, th I think the major comment that's coming from members, though, if I can, um, if I can pull that together, is that um, it would appear that the site levels initially, before the application was approved, was misread, because it would appear the site was half a metre higher than um, original the original application stated, um, of what I can understand. Um, so possibly, if uh, yourself and Mr. Dickman could. Um, address that to put to us, please. So, so in relation, oh, I think Graham wants to start oh. that. Matthew, you're on. Yeah, okay. Um, so obviously all, all applications are, are, are taken and, and considered on their own merits and the information that they provide to us is what we make our consideration against. So the levels that, that they, they, they give us are the ones that we take account of and like and obviously, like you've said, they they have gone got on site, and then when they've had other surveys done, once they've done the clearing works, they've realised that there was a mistake. So they've they have 
they have provided as part of this application to rectify that mistake and that we have to take account of the information that they provide us. Okay, uh, Councillor Surgeon. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Matthew, I just want to ask, I think I, meant, uh, I read it in the report that there's been a few objections. Can you uh, clarify uh, if there's how many uh, objections there have been? And I know you mentioned uh, half a metres marginal, uh, but is it going to oversee any other properties around that area? And, you know, again, has there been objections to the height uh, being raised by half a metre? Thank you. I'll just be one second. I'll just have a look, a quick look at the report and refresh my mind. I think if it, well, while Matthew's doing that, I think um, from the layouts that you'll see in your presentation, if you look at that and then you look at the, there's one that shows the location site plan, you'll see that in terms of direct relationship with neighbouring properties, apart from the ones right at the entrance to the site and one right at the, the bottom south east corner, most of them don't overlook. So there's no direct relationship between neighbouring gardens or neighbouring properties themselves. So I think the issue is more to do with, in, for the majority of the site, is the physical bulk of this development going to be significantly different to the scheme that was actually approved? I think the, the immediate answer to your question is that that relationship between the buildings is not different, uh, apart from a couple of properties up at the top of the site the property to the southeast corner of the site. But again, they're gable on to the yeah. development. So there's no overlooking windows. That's that relationship is no different to what's being approved. Thank you, Chair. OK, so can I just ask a quick follow up question? Is it just to confirm the, the red um, outline or is it including the blue outline as well? The, the red outline is the application site. The blue is just what they what they also own what's right. in the applicant's ownership. In relation to the number of objections, there was three objections. Um, the, the objections made note of the of the size of the houses um, and also about the glazing and access to the park, how that wasn't understood, and in terms of um, drainage. And there's a comment about the gates, but the gates, the gated community aspect of it was removed. Councillor GX. You're on mute, uh, Councillor Lydia. Apologies. Um, just to come back, um, it's really difficult because you actually haven't been to see the site and the photograph I've been sent by residents um, shows a towering building that overlooks what is technically a village location wood houses and all the houses are quite cottagey. And it does look from the actual photograph of the actual building that has been built that they can see overlooking people's houses. Obviously, I have I have visited the site and and I do understand the size of the properties within wood houses and 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 whilst I was there, they were in 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 the progress of building the houses, but they wasn't at the point where obviously your photo comes from now. And in relation to that, obviously we're taking into consideration in this aspect of it's about the difference and in terms of the difference from an officer's point of view, in my opinion, that the difference isn't significant enough to warrant. A recommendation of refusal by by myself. Now, obviously, the the as, the aspect is that there is there is the the elevation from the road and they and the, the the two houses that you will see from the from the main road through Woodhouses, which is Medlock Road. There's only two houses that you will see the front elevations of, and they're set back from the road. In in the way in their orientation, so it is my opinion that the the, the height change wouldn't be significant enough compared to what was approved like i say for a reason to recommend a reason for refusal going forward obviously once you're in that housing you go you turn and you're in that housing development obviously it's a, it's a development on its own in terms of you're away from medlock road and obviously each house would relate to each other and and it seems appropriate that that all the house types change to take account of the of the changes Councillor Gary. No. I've um, lived in Fells with all my life and I remember wood houses being just one street and it's really concerning me about the number of um, three-storey developments which are taking place in wood houses 
Um, it's like Councillor Jates was saying, essentially, it used to be a small village. And these big houses which are going up now, it's just losing the village feel, which, quite frankly, people are paying an awful lot of money to go and live there. Uh, can I, uh, Mr Dickman, I, I believe, wants to speak. Is it, well, it was, it was actually to, to Councillor Jakes, really, that I was just going to ask the question about the residents th who took the photograph. Do you know where they actually live? Are they on Medlock Road or are they on Stamford Drive? Do you know? Um, I don't know. The, the picture is taken from Medlock Road looking towards uh, the houses. And the houses are very tall and have quite big windows. So anybody, I think they would overlook the houses on Medlock Road from the picture. So I'm just wondering if these, these are the two that Matthew is referring to, um, which are some distance away because there are only two properties in the new development which actually have windows facing towards the back of Medlock Road. And what they actually face is the access road and the property immediately, if you go from Medlock Road, immediately on the right hand side. But the separation distance of that is well above the required standard. So yes, you, there will be windows there, but they are at a distance which is well above what would normally be required. And I also go back to the, the, the same issue that a similar house type has been approved. So the question is not, will that cause overlooking? The question is, will that cause any overlooking beyond a development that's already been approved. I think those two things together, but I appreciate what you're saying is that, yes, most of the properties in the area are two storey, but members have already approved a scheme which includes rooms in the roof space, and most of these properties are three storey because they accommodate rooms within the roof space. Um, again, that goes back to the second point that's just been made really about the character of the area. Um, you're comparing what's been approved with what's now being approved we're not we can't go back and start from scratch and assess this application uh, as you would do had there been no previous uh, approval on the site thank you chair okay um councillor jx do you did you want to come back on that yeah just a quick come back please um so one of the issues we have with this development is that uh, is that the um, developer didn't meet any of the preconditions and have lots and lots of evidence to show that, including emails from officers. So my question is, did did the developer seek permission to build these houses higher before they actually built them? Um, yeah, if I could just, just come straight back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's similar to the point that, that's already been made, is that if, if what they are constructing now is the current scheme, which is before committee, i.e. it's not an approved scheme, that's at their risk. But the assessment that we've got to make and subsequently members have to make is, is that difference between those two schemes so severe, i.e. the impact of it so severe, that what was deemed acceptable is now no longer acceptable because of those changes. If members were to conclude that that is the case, then quite clearly any work the applicant, obviously as you're aware, the right of appeal that, that runs with that, um, but say their appeal was, was thrown out, any expense they would have put forward in creating these dwellings will be theirs and they will have to bring them back to an approved scheme at that stage. It's a risk. It's annoying. It annoys us as planners as much as I'm sure it annoys you as members that uh, if people decide to jump the gun. But the basic principle is the same. You've got to judge the development itself. Is that acceptable? Whether it's already got approval or not, whether it's already been built or not, isn't the matter at hand. Is this scheme significantly different from the approved one that it would justify approval on its merits in that comparison. Obviously, your office's view is that that change is not that significant, even though the buildings are slightly higher now than they were as last approved. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Surgeon. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, this is just going back to the height. Um, I know you're saying again it's marginal and everything, but I just want clarification. Will it infringe further on the uh, the top houses um, where the, the new houses are being built? So, for example, by having a half meter, would it uh, not just the next door neighbour, but will it infringe on the neighbours perhaps further away um, and affect their privacy? It, that that as a consideration has has been has been considered and it and it wouldn't the the they already had the way in which they're orientated there already were front elevation windows in the roof so the distance like graham said before is far and beyond what what our standard would usually be to rear elevation windows of the house on medlock road and further afield the houses on the opposite side obviously that distance you then take into account front gardens the pavement, the road, and then more front gardens before you get to those houses, because there are front gardens on both sides. So the, there isn't considered to be any additional amenity impact in terms of loss of amenity to existing houses. OK, thank you. I think the chairman might have frozen. Are you, are you? I think, Katie, we may have a, an issue. Uh, who's vice chair? You want me to take yeah. over for a minute? Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, he's back, I think. No. Are you back, yeah. Peter? Shall we turn our cameras off for? To help. Yeah, turn the cameras off, it, it might help with the bandwidth. Uh, honestly, yeah, I've not. <laughs> Councillor Gary? Yeah, I've got a bit of a problem with this because if you go down Felsworth Road on the right hand side as you go into the village, we started off at the top, there's a, a development. Um, and those are three storey properties and you could perhaps get away with it because they're there before you go into the village. If you go right down um, Medlock Road, there's another development of three storey properties and you could probably get away with that there because it's at the end of the village. However, this development is right in the centre of the village and I'm struggling with that because I don't honestly think it's going to be appropriate, but that's just my opinion. Right. If I could, if I could just share a, a corner of the of the of the site section plan, just to just to just to show you, like in a zoomed in element of what of what the the view from the road is in terms of of levels. Um, I just so if you if you if you look at this plan here, this this is the. On the left hand side, this is the dog and partridge pub. This is the, the end terrace, and obviously this is the gap through the site. Now the land level here is 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 108, and obviously these are the ridge line heights. So you can see that the overall ridge height actually is com is in comparison to the two buildings here. Obviously the, the the detached house on the corner as you turn in, and the and the t three newer houses, and then obviously it's marginally higher than the traditional terraces here. But given the setback and given the change in levels across the site, which you can then see here above, the, the level change across, the actual the actual impact isn't isn't significant because the level at the back of the site, when you see the distance from the back of the houses on Medlock Road here, it's lower. So when you come to here, the actual view of it isn't significant isn't significantly higher because of the setback so far and the and the land level changes the land falls away slightly inside the site so when you read it across the ridge heights it is in comparison to the two houses on the left but it is obviously marginally higher than the one on the right and the distance setback when you you're on site would be visually that 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 is behind well behind the houses on the block road i hope, I hope that helps Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, did you want to come back, Councillor Gary, or have you just left your hand up? Or are you taking it down now? Is there no further questions? 
No. I'm sorry, I've lost sound again. Have we all lost sound or is it just me? <coughs> no, we can hear you, Chair. I can hear you, yeah. Peter. Yeah, right. If we can move on to the next stage now, um, we've, um, we're now going to a discussion of the application before us. Has anybody got any comments in general? they'd like to make um, on the variation that we have before us. Councillor Gloucester. Yeah, I think it, it was really it was really useful to see that um, image um, that we've just seen because it is actually clear that there isn't that much of a difference in the roof height for the existing properties. And I think what's unfortunate these days is, to, is that to get as many houses in as possible, they're very tall and very slim. Um, and although some of us wish for that, um, it's not very attractive when it's on properties. And also when they first built, it is quite a shock to see them, I think, because I don't think they look very attractive when they're right next to other properties that have been there a while. But I just think that is the way that it is today. Um, and that's what's needed to get as many houses in as possible, which is what's needed today, apparently. So, I, you know, I just think half a metre, it sounds a lot, doesn't it? But actually, I don't think it's an excessive amount. I think if it was one and a half metres, then, we, we, you know, we might be reconsidering it. But to be fair, I don't think half a metre is excessive. And having seen that slide that's just been put up, which was very helpful, I, I don't think really it is that materially different to the original um, planning application that was approved. Councillor Jakes. Are you on mute, Councillor Jakes? Sorry, I must have put my hand up by accident. I'm just trying to um, email the picture to Matthew so we can show people if that's all right. But if I, if I don't have time, that's fine. But I've, I apologise for putting my hand up. Oh, sorry. No, I did want to say something. Um, I thought, are we voting on this as a separate one or are we voting them on both together? No, we're voting them on them both um, together uh, separately. Okay, so because... each, each variation will be voted on separately. Okay, because... Um, I've got quite a lot to say on the second part of it, and I would like to propose a deferral to answer some of the questions on both of the things. So can we can I leave that on the table until we've discussed both of them? Because, well, because no, I, have we're, real, we're, I have a real lot of concerns about some of the um, aspects of this application. Um, we, we would um, we would have to take them separately. We're, so we're just discussing the first, we're discussing item six now, variation for that. And and then we would actually come to item seven. So if you if you want to move anything, it would have to be moved individually for each particular element of the variation. Okay, can I move that we defer this as well then, please, until we've been able to have a full and open discussion about this application in full, because there are I have numerous concerns and numerous evidence that that um, this uh, that that this uh, all these conditions that are now being removed um, have not been thought through, and I have quite a lot of evidence on the second bit, particularly about things like the drainage and the parking that sort of all time with the application. Right. Um, it, it, to Councillor Gloucester um, indicated, and then we've asked uh, Mr Taylor to comment. Sorry, no, mine's just a mistake. I didn't take my hand down. All right. Um, Mr Taylor, you wanted to comment? It's just just to say, um, obviously, the the next application isn't isn't a removal. It's a variation to take account of the information um, that's been submitted to to address some of most of the conditions that require things to be submitted originally. Um, so it, it's not a removal. It, it's about it's about varying. That was all. 
Mr. Dickman, you want to come up? Yeah, um, go back to the, to the the two applications. I mean, in theory, this the, they could actually have been submitted as one application because they're both doing the same thing. What this first application is doing is changing condition two, which is the list of plans conditions. So this process, what minor material amendment variation of condition process is for. So they're doing condition two on this one and then on all the others. They could again, they could have submitted that in a slightly different way. They could have submitted that as a condition discharge application. But what they're attempting to do is to say, right, we're now providing the details of the conditions that were placed on the previous application and therefore you would amend the wording to that. The advantage of doing it this way is if the first application is approved, the conditions cross. Otherwise you would have, the only condition would change on this application would be condition two. And then it would have, for instance, a condition that says you need to submit a drainage scheme. But we've then got another application that's got a drainage scheme in it, which we're now saying, you complete the development in accordance with that. So it's a little bit complicated, but that's the way, that's the reason why they've been done separately. But the first application that you're considering, you're only considering that issue of, is the change in design significantly different in a, an adverse way that would now justify refusing the application? If you have concerns about the drainage or whatever, trees or any of these other items, then you can consider that as part of the second application. And if you're not happy with those and for good planning reasons, you can refuse that application. But you have to split, the, they've been submitted split. So the only change you're considering on the first application is the change in design. And therefore I would say that really you need to make a determination on that application separately. You could end up tonight, we could end up having one approved and one refused, two approved, two refused. You're judging them separately, but you can't pull those other issues into the first application and say it's unacceptable for those reasons. I hope that's, that, that clarifies it. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Whoops. Um, Councillor Harkness. Hello, oh, can you hear me? Um, yeah, and I think it was um, just back on Councillor Jake's point. So could we not now, um, I'm, I'm guessing what she's saying is that if when we start talking about um, item seven, uh, there'll be some stuff which come out with that, which might inform our decision for item six a bit better. Is that what Councillor Jake was talking about? Um, and if that's the case, then could we not now go and start talking about item seven and then we can come back and make a decision about item six and then item seven afterwards, after we've had a further discussion. Is that, is that what, um, would that help? Um, I think that we could fall, fall into some difficulty if we actually do that, because as um, Mr. Dickman said, they've been, absolute, they've been submitted as two separate um, applications um i don't know whether you want to make a comment mr evans on that yeah. uh, yes chair no that because they are separate applications you do need to consider them separately so any issues that anybody wants to raise on relating to the second matter would have to be discussed with that item rather than this item because otherwise it, you you could end up falling into difficulties where you're discussing issues for this application that aren't relevant to it Thank you. Councillor Jakes, you wanted to come back. Sorry, you're on mute again, I think. Councillor Jakes. Keep it off mute. Sorry, I do apologise, Chair. Um, therefore, I'd like to propose a deferral until members have actually got full information, because I think until you've actually seen the houses in situ in the village, <laughs> a drawing does not really show you what the houses actually look like. It, um, and I think the half a metre stroke metre does really make a difference when you see it. Um, thank you. I, I um, second that, Chair. 
Okay, we've got that on the table. Um, we've got Councillor Sheldon that wants to comment. If I may, Chair, I'm relatively new to this committee. As you know, I'm just standing in for John at the moment. But I, I really believe that the damage was done on the first application in that most people, Councillor Jakes and Sir John, are saying that uh, it, it, this development isn't fitted in this village. But that's too late now. That planning uh, application has been approved. Tonight we've got uh, a half a metre on top of the ridge line. And I do agree with Councillor Gloucester that the size of these houses as, as they stand or uh, the, the first stood at the first application is not going to make a lot of difference. Uh, and, and that is item one as far as I believe. Thank you. Did you did you want to make a comment, Mr. Evans? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, I, in, in relation to deferral, what is the reason? What is it is being deferred for? If just Councillor Jates could just explain again, I wasn't quite sure what the what the for what purpose is it being deferred? Um, so that so that the physical um, look of the building, um, you can actually see or from the photograph now that it's been built that it actually doesn't fit in with the village. Um, oh, I'm, I know I'm wording this terribly wrong. Um, there's there's a phrase in there about uh, keeping the integrity of the village look, but these houses because they are much taller than the ones that are already there, and you might say half a meter doesn't make a difference, but in situ it it looks a lot more than that. So are we are you in essence saying that you want members to have the ability to go and actually look at it themselves? Is that is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Or, or, or at least photographic evidence. Yeah, thank you, Chair. That, that, I just wanted a clarification on that. Um, Mr. Dickman wanted to come in. Yeah, I think, I mean, that, that clearly is a legitimate reason for deferral is that if members feel that they need to see more evidence of what the impact will be. Uh, I was a little bit concerned that it might be mixing and matching some concerns about other elements of the scheme in this application. So that is a genuine reason for that. And we can obviously come back with photographs showing the buildings in situ. But again, I would caution, uh, as Councillor Sheldon just mentioned, it's the reminder that you're dealing with a comparison in a way between the scheme that's been approved. Um, that's got permission that can be built and the scheme that's now there now. So when you look at those photographs, you'd, you'd still be needing to do that in the context of what's being approved and, and visualise that as to what is that difference between the two. But beyond that, yes, it's, it's a legitimate reason to say, because of what we're talking about is what's the visual impact wanting more information on that is i would say is, is a reasonable request thank you chair councillor gloucester sorry i think uh, graham's just actually answered my question but i i would have thought once you've had a scheme approved that's an enforcement issue rather than the planning committee going looking at a house that's be, been put up um to decide whether it fits in or not that should have been decided at the original planning committee meeting i'm quite sure could could, could as you say where, where we're at here is that um i think that when this uh, an application was originally approved and expressed at that stage about the height of these properties and albeit um the variation that is being requested is only marginal, well, marginal in the sense that it's another, what, 18 inches to two foot higher. It could still have some bearing on it. So I think that if we can actually make sure and fully investigate that, I think that would be more useful. And that could be done by photographic evidence, possibly presented um, via the deferment at the next meeting. So that, uh, it's just my comments. I don't know whether anybody else's um, councillor Sergian I've got. 
Uh, yes, Chet. I was just going to ask if we could just move to a vote because I'm just conscious uh, we spent quite a lot of time on this item. Um, so if we could just move to a vote, please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is there any further comments? Um, before we move to the vote, I just asked for the final comment from uh, Mr. Dickman to see if there is any. Yeah, I, I think it's. Okay. Yeah, Chair, I think it's, it is the case. I've ju just said that we can give you some more evidence of what's there, but as I say, it's just cautioning again. That's what you're judging. You can't go back to the principle of the type of development. Matthew's slides clearly give an indication of what the difference between those two properties are. So we have some photographs for next time. Uh, and also we'll have we'll be able to, to say to you this is what's been built so you'll know where they're up to but again bear in mind it's the comparison not and i'm repeating this you can't go back and say oh well we've, we've now decided now we've seen it that having that type of d dwelling on the site is no longer acceptable in terms of the enforcement element that council lost and mentioned if they have erected the scheme they've now got before you and members refuse that application obviously there's the appeal process and it got thrown out at appeal then we would be in an enforcement situation but obviously we're a long way down the line yeah. from that thank you okay let's net track on there um if we could then move to the vote it's been moved by councillor gx and seconded by <laughs> councillor this for um more photographic evidence uh, to see what sort of impact it would have on the original approval. Um, if we could take the vote on that, please, that would be helpful. Councillor Davis. For. Sorry. Was that me, Katie? Yeah. Yeah, prove it. Lost it. Far. Councillor Harkness? Uh, against. Councillor Hewitt? Councillor Hewitt? Against. Councillor Bell? For. Councillor Gates? Four. Councillor Vivian? Four. Councillor Sheldon? Against. Councillor Sergian? Uh, four. Councillor Dean? Four. That's eight four and three against. Okay, so we've moved um, the first variation to um, be deferred. If we can move then to the second um, variation that's being requested on this development. Mr. Taylor, are you going to outline it? Mute. Sorry, I'll go backwards. Uh, one sec. So, sorry about that. Um, so, this application is to vary the conditions number one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, and thirteen. Um, the slideshow goes through each condition in turn and outlines what they've submitted and, and, and what the recommendation is on each one. 
Um, so this is obviously the edge red and the, the edge blue. Same aerial again. Um, in relation to condition number one, they were looking to, to vary this condition. Um, however, given given that this th this condition is required because it relates to the time period of being able to implement the permission, so it's been agreed that this one wouldn't be removed or varied. In relation to condition number two, this relates to the list of approved plans and uh, is there to, to, to get rid of the avoidance of doubt when someone is implementing it, this and as such it, it would be varied on approval to reflect the additional information that's been submitted um, as part of this application. Condition number three related to the submission of materials. As you can see before you there are the, are the materials they were they have proposed for things. Um, in my opinion, it's the very sort of standard materials in relation to developments nowadays are anthracite grey, uh, windows and 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 um, black guttering and 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 there's a mixture of stone and a mixture of brick, um, and then there's the boundary boundary treatments. Condition number four relates to the off-street car parking provision. All all properties had a, have off-street car parking provision, um, and this this relates to the material which it's going to be done in, and 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 they are looking to do it in a um, porous material, so it would drain drain through, and it would be a, be a resin finish, and and there gives you an idea of how how it's constructed and, and the overall finish. Condition number five is in relation to drainage. Um, the drainage people have worked with the applicant and, and, and their people to, to look through their drainage proposals and it is agreed that the proposals they put forward are, are sufficient to deal with the conditions original pre-commencement portion. Um, the only the only thing being that they would have to provide um, the LFFA a, a water course survey um, before the, the properties are occupied but the plans in terms of draining the site have, have been agreed uh, in principle by uh, LFFA um, consultees. Uh, six is about tr is about um, protecting the water course and, and the SPI. Um, they provided an, an ecological survey, um, and and the con that has been considered by Greater Manchester Ecology Unit. Um, and therefore the pre-commencement portion of it has been dealt with. However, obviously they'd have to work to to that survey. Um, and as I understand from the agent that they have been doing. Um, and that blue area in the top left, and it was to do with um, putting a cell web system in for when they put the parking area down. Um, these details are acceptable, but as you can as you can tell from the report, there has there has been um, a missed missed implementation of these uh, originally, um, and there is considered to be some damage to some root protection areas um, of trees adjacent to the site. Because obviously, the majority of the trees in the site were to be removed as approved originally, um, and there are replacements. and The, the landscaping plan has been. Um, bolstered to in terms of size of replacements to take account of, of the damage and um, the trees on the boundary with the golf club are actually trees outside of the conservation area because the boundary line is actually where the conservation area ends so anything within the the golf club aren't have no protective status Condition number nine is to do with the, the hard soft landscaping scheme as you can see the 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 significant planting down the boundaries and also within the site adjacent to the bowling green um, and then a small area next to plot number four and um, obviously then there's the, the hard surface treatments and the road treatments and the pavement treatments and this small area of landscaping in, in each garden um, but that's not particularly significant and then there's the plan there showing the boundary treatments in terms of the finish for the the, the boundary fences between the properties the front of the properties are all Left very open. There's no there's, there's no boundary fences, low bar, low boundary fences at the front. Obviously, given the parking arrangements. Condition number ten. Um, this had no. It's noted by Jimmy. This had no pre-commencement portion of it. Um, it's to do to with birds nesting and, and, and things like that. And in the, as such, it, it's not their recommendation that it's removed. And this this has been uh, discussed with the applicant, and and they they consider that to be acceptable and, and it's been remaining. 
Condition number 11 is to do with um, landfill gas and they provided the information um, in terms of a survey and construction details. This has been con considered by our environmental health colleagues and, and the information submitted is sufficient to deal with the pre-commencement portion of the condition so that the condition has been reworded to be implemented in accordance with the details provided. And obviously at the end, before their occupation, they have to provide the validation report and evidence of, of, of all plots being implemented in accordance with the plans. The final one was to do with the entrance and you can see there on the right of the slide is, is, is the arrangement in terms of making the visibility, which was a key thing at the beginning of the process um, and getting um, consent originally because of the, the entrance being um, slightly narrower than, than, than what would usually be accepted and obviously there only being a footway on one side. Um, you can see there from the photo that the boundary wall and the garden area of the house adjacent to the entrance has 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 been removed and lowered to the height it was it was approved to and allowing for the entrance of, of the site to have visibility the condition is varied to say that it will maintain to be as it is there and and not changed and 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 therefore that the entrance will always have the visibility that it requires and that's all of it Okay. Okay. I, I, the the first question I, I asked to get it out of the way. There'd been no contradiction um, to the deferral on any of these items that uh, are up before us now. Sorry, Pete. Did can you hear that again? Yes. Um, the various items that we have before us now, there'd be no contradiction to the deferral that we made on the first variation. So this, they're all standalone um, items. Mr. Dickman, do you want to? Yes, please. Um, I just, yeah, there, there is one element of this that, that follows on from the deferral, which is condition two of this application. So condition two is not up for change this time, but in the report it's updated, it's referencing the plans of the previous application. So had the last application been approved, I would have nothing to say on this. So, but because that's not been determined, we obviously can't approve condition two as written. Condition two will go back to the original list of plans of the previous scheme. That's that's why when I was saying about the two applications, this is why it becomes a little bit more complicated uh, by doing it this way around. So the list of conditions here is for a set of plans which members have not yet approved. So obviously that will, if this application is approved, that condition will have to change back to the list of previously approved design plans. So that'd just be one one amendment. We'll clarify, depending on how, how this pans out, I'll clarify that again. It might be easier to clarify it at the end. Uh, but just to make the point, you're not obviously looking at the design as part of this application. Thank you, Chair. OK, uh, uh, Councillor Gary, did you want to comment? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought Councillor Jakes asked for the deferment of both items because of the concerns that she had. Um, we take, have to take each item separately and we've moved on to the second item now. So we're actually discussing this as a standalone item presently. Right. I personally think after Mr. Dickman's comments that the sensible thing in my view would be to defer this item as well so they both run together again so I would move we we move deferral to make sure that both items are um, running and able to run together for the same um, particular development uh, I'll second that I'll second yeah. that yep yeah. Is there any further comments on that? <coughs> Councillor Sheldon? 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. If I could just ask Matthew, it's just a general question, really, but on this development, is the treatment of the, the street surface water and the roof for rainwater and the sewage, is it all into the sewage or does the rainwater go into a nearby stream? Just for information, Chair, thank you. I was already on yeah. um, So in, in relation to it, so the, the, the driveway areas are permeable. Um, so the intention is that, that, that they will, the, the area of hard standing would soak away um, into, into the, the driveway areas. Um, the road has got a full drainage treatment um, and there is, um, there is agreed um, storage tanks and, and then going into the, the water course, which is why they, the, the, the final survey of the water course is, is, is still part of the condition. Right, thank you. Councillor Jacks, do you want to? Yes, thanks. And I've muted now. Thank you, Chair. Um, one of the big concerns was the drainage of this because there's already been flooding with houses nearby. Um, concerns have been raised about um, sewage during the development because um, none of the preconditions were actually met when this was being when these houses were being built. Um, and residents would like reassurances from a planning point of view that actually the the water. Um, the drainage assessment has been completed because the the one that's on the website, the original one was a few years ago for 14 houses. The current one looks like an identical one, but says 17 houses, but doesn't particularly reassure me that um, that there isn't going to be any drainage problems. So, for example, it says um, a survey of the public combined sewer system on site should be undertaken to determine invert levels and whether a gravity connection can be achieved. Has that been done? Has that been completed? So, so in relation to this scheme, the main, the, one of the main things that have taken the time in which to, to, to get sorted out has been making sure that meticulously our colleagues in drainage slash the LFA um, have got the information that they wanted. It, it's taken us a long time going back and forth with the applicant to make sure that they have given us all the details required to make sure that the scheme that we approved to remove the pre-commencement portion of the condition, if you imagine the original condition, the pre-commencement, the details you need, and then they have to actually implement it to it. So they've they've given enough detail to deal with the pre-commencement part that the scheme in principle, in terms of designs and, and, and the drainage is sufficient, that, that that's been dealt with. And then going forward, they would have to provide it as a, as agreed, and that portion of the of the condition stays that the drainage scheme as agreed would be implemented on site before people occupy so that there aren't any problems and, and I can assure you that the, our colleagues at the LFA have, have meticulously gone through the information and and asked for more detail and made sure that they're happy with the details before the before you and that's been part of part of the ta majority of the time it's taken to, to get it to this point that we can give you this recommendation that we feel as a as a department is appropriate with our consultees that that condition can be varied. Uh, can I come back in on that chair, please? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so, so while I, while I understand what you're saying, I have literally spent all day reading this drainage document, um, and it doesn't seem to make any sense that all the drainage issues aren't resolved before they actually put the houses up of which they know they have built them. So therefore the residents who are contacting us to say their houses have already been flooded, what reassurance can we give them? So could you provide me with some evidence of that or can you tell me where to find it before we come back to the next planning meeting? So in, in relation to the scheme, obviously, like you say, they they started prior to to, to dealing with some the pre-commencement conditions now i appreciate that that it isn't right and and they they were required to stop for a period of time which is all that we can do and then they were and they were advised on on making applications to deal with it and as part of that they have submitted the application which is before you now and they're looking to they've sought to deal with the situation and they have the details and they have they, they have gone and, and, and employed the right people to provide that information. I understand there was a breakdown in, in terms of understanding of, of, of where they're up to in terms of the conditions and, and probably a bit of haste from the developer to get going before he actually had dealt with them. 
that's that's my understanding. But but since the point of, of, of realising that they have worked with us and the LFA, our consultee, our experts, to make sure that the details have been fully considered and and are before you as, as a scheme that is acceptable in terms of provided it's implemented. And it's for them then to make sure that they implement that, to make sure that the houses can be occupied and and they're not at that point yet so we still have the time to be able to to check these things and and and, and make sure that it's done thank you um councillor harkness um yeah thank you chair um so apart from um uh, condition two i don't see any reason why we can't make a decision on all the other conditions tonight because if they're not dependent on a previous application and as Mr Evans already said we have to treat them separately anyway so and I don't see the merit really in necessarily deferring this particular item but I wanted to just make a little comment on on um, condition A which was relating to the trees if we weren't to accept that um, variation what's the likely impact going to be on that one? One second, I'll just make sure I'm talking about the right one. So in regards to condition number eight, um, obviously the, the, the site the site itself is in the conservation area and and, and the trees that are impacted um, in terms of the fences, the, the tree protective fences not going up, uh, are mainly the ones, there's, 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 a tree to, there's trees towards the back of the houses on Medlock Road uh, and then there's, there's some on, on the boundary with the... Um, the bowling green that have, that have been impacted um, due to naivety of the of the developer, and and they they appreciate that, and to deal with that, they they have made sure they provide the information now so that they can go up and they can try and deal with it, and they've worked with us to to add um, to their planting spec in terms of trees that are going to go in in the conservation area that then will have conservation status because of the size of the replacements that are going in and the the, the intention is that the the trees being on the landscaping scheme and being retained that way in the, in the end they will they will add to the conservation area more than the trees that that have been damaged now i appreciate there's there's a there's a time lag in that and and that would be the same um anywhere else in the conservation area but we we have understood that and we have done our best to work with them and they've worked with us to make sure that we've we've tried to mitigate the damage and that's that's the best in this situation we can do Councillor yeah, gary yeah i just wanted to know how many trees have been damaged and if they were mature trees and are they going to be replaced with some immature trees or saplings so um, the, the standards that are going in are heavy standards. So it's it's the size it's the size that you can plant and they will take um, at the bigger end. They're not saplings, and and the, and the damage is is in a is in a small area of, of trees in the conservation area um, at the back of the houses and at the side of the, of the bowling green. So it, it's not in the high numbers. The the main damage is down the boundary with the golf club. Now the ones in the trees inside the golf club's ownership are are not protected the golf club is outside the conservation area they have no they have no protected status so the damage to those we're actually getting replacements for for that and re realistically they're, they're trees that that could have been removed and i know some have been removed in agreement with the golf club because the golf club obviously have a maintenance issue with with, with the trees and and they're on the boundary with the developer now, as you can see from the landscaping plan, there's trees going inside the conservation area all the way down that line. And they will, in the end, obviously, a chunk of time in, into the future, will add to the, the, the tree coverage in the conservation area. They'll have conservation status, which means that they can't be removed. And, and that is a, net, is a net gain, in my personal opinion, having dealt with works to trees and tree preservation order applications for a long time for the council. Um, the overall tree coverage of the site originally, if you look at the original officer report, were all very low in terms of their quality. It was a lot of scrub trees. It's, it was a site that's been, that had been left and, and, and obviously been um, 
taken by naturalised by trees. So they didn't have a, a status that we could have TPO'd them, and, and which is why th the clearing of the site was agreed. So the hope is that the trees that go in, in the end, will will add to the canopy of the conservation area. But in that, there is a time delay, obviously. Councillor Sergian. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I just want to raise a point that it's been proposed and seconded. Can we move to a vote uh, for deferment? Yes, I was thank going you. to do that at this vote. We, we did have a list of speakers. Um, I just think it'd be it'd be tidy and we can tie everything in if we actually defer this item and that's why I've moved it and Councillor Davis is second. So we could move to the vote. Councillor Davis. Councillor Davis, you're muted. Yeah, sorry, far. Thank you. Councillor Gary? Uh, Councillor Gloucester? Far. Harkness? Against. Councillor Hewitt? For what? Ibrahim? Oh, sorry. Uh, Councillor Iqbal? For. Councillor Jakes? Councillor Jakes? For. Thank you. Councillor Vivian? Four. Councillor Sheldon. Four. Councillor Sergian. Four. Councillor Dean. Four. Thank you. That uh, means. Sorry, what, what was the voting is? Ten for and one against. Right. So the, the item is deferred um, alongside the other one. If we could move on to the uh, item eight. Um, which is um, 122, 130 Copstro Road. Um, this is before us by the virtue that it's uh, a relation of a council member. Um, is it Mr Dickman that's going to introduce the item? It is, yes. Um, I'll just do my bit of trying to share the uh, very short presentation on this one, which I think is hopefully that one there. Uh, have I got the right one? Yeah. Cops to Hill Road? Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. So as you can see, this application, as, as, as Cam, Councillor Dean has said, uh, is only before members because uh, the applicant is related to a couple of members of the, the council. It relates to an existing bakery and in effect, it's almost to create a kind of factory shop within the bakery so that they can sell some of their products within the building. Uh, not very good uh, plan, unfortunately. This is Copster Hill Road coming down the site. You can see the surrounding area, there's residential properties, uh, some commercial properties further to the north, uh, but the building itself is already in commercial use. So this is the premise uh, used obviously for the bakery business. There'll be an area within the frontage of the building which will actually be utilised uh, for members of the public to go in and order uh, cakes and so forth that are baked on the premises. Some minor alterations to the fenestration of the building are proposed, which should improve it. So if you can just see on that this front elevation there, you can see the window areas around the, uh, the building, a new doorway put in place. This is to give you uh, just an impression of the area. So on the left hand side is the Copster Road frontage and you can see just in the, the top left hand corner, this is the area that will be limited to the retail use and there's a condition for that purpose. Uh, the main reason for that is obviously if the whole building was to subsequently be used for retail purposes. There may be other implications for traffic and so forth. So we felt it's appropriate to control that particular element of it. Uh, other than that, um, this is a fairly straightforward proposal. It shouldn't result in any significant increases in, in activity, but obviously assist the business um, to obviously expand their market for sales. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dickman. Has any members got any questions? All right. If there's no questions, I, I would move approval. I'll second that, Chair. 
second that. Yeah. Thank you. Has anybody got any comments on the proposal? If not, we'll go to the vote. It's been moved approval with the conditions appropriate. We'll start the roll call, Chair. Yes, please. Okay. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Gary. Four. Councillor Gloucester. Four. Agnes. Four. Hewitt. Four. Iqbal. Councillor Jakes? Four. Vian? Four. Eldon? Four. Dan? Four. Councillor Dean? Four. Unanimous? I think that was unanimous. Yes. Thank you. If we go on to item nine, which is again another application associated with a council member, and it's 12 Ashfield Crescent. Mr. Dickman. I think you're on mute, Mr. Dickman. Just to check again, I've put the correct presentation up. Has it come up? Not yet. Not yet. Anything now? No. Hmm. No? No. Well, if it, I'll, I'll, I'll just give a, a brief um, run through the presentation. If members have got any queries, we'll, we'll and need to see the presentation, but you've all obviously got the, uh, the presentation. There isn't much to it. Effectively, it's an application. It relates to a semi-detached bungalow, and the proposal is for front and rear dormers to the building. There was an earlier application that was refused, and that was refused on the basis um, of the scale of the front dormer being out of place. As a result, the, the scheme's been amended, so the front dormer has been reduced in scale. It's been set back from the eaves of the building. The dormer to the rear is still on a large scale, but as with many dormers on the rear of properties, many of them don't require planning permission. So with slight amendment to that, it wouldn't actually need permission. So we consider the, the larger scale on the rear to be acceptable. The smaller scale on the front is more in keeping with the general character of the area uh, and on that basis the, the amendments that they made uh, make the scheme acceptable recommended for approval thank you chair thank you very much has anybody got any questions uh, i would move uh, approval seconded thank you has anybody got any comments on the motion? No? Okay, thank you. If we could then go to the vote, please. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Gary? Four. Councillor Gloucester? Four. Councillor Harkness? Four. Councillor Hewitt? Four. <clears throat> Councillor Iqbal? Four. Councillor Jakes? Four. Councillor Vivian? Four. Councillor Sheldon? Four. Councillor Sergio? Four. And Councillor Dean? Four. Unanimous. That's unanimous. If we could go to the concluding item, which is appeals. They're there for noting. I don't know whether anybody's got any comments on them. If not, I'll take that as that we've noted them. Yeah, noted. Yeah. OK, and I think that concludes the um, meeting tonight.
thanks very much for your attendance and patience. And um, I hope you all keep well through the lockdown and come out of it wonderfully fit and fighting to go for Christmas. OK, thanks very much. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Hey.